Bonjour, Big Heaven. <laughs> uh, we're going to pick you right here, brother. Welcome to yeah, Philly. We're, excited. we're excited to get you, man. Hey, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Jalen. You hear me? Hey, Coach, I need to play with Asa. All right, we'll get it to you, man. We can get it to you quick. All right, baby. All right, I'll talk to you. Thank you. Bye. All right. <laughs> Jalex Hunt, it's funny because Howie did not know what to say when Jalex Hunt <laughs> called him Big Pimpin'. He had no idea, but at least, you know, they were able to have a conversation. Like by the time Nick Sirianni gets the phone, that's it, great. You want to see that passion. You want to see that excitement. Oh, it's and, awesome. You know, you 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 uh you sit there and wait nearly through a hundred picks. The phone rings and you join one of the best teams in the NFL, a team that really had no needs entering the draft, a team that was able to just go out and get the best players, and they had some good players fall to them. Oh my gosh! I mean, it, it's it's mastermind. I mean, he he is big pimping. He's he's pimping the whole damn draft. He's pimping the whole league. I mean, he's killing it right now, Howie Roseman. One, Jalex Hunt is one of those guys where. If there was like a mid-round defensive player where you went, hey, he's under the radar and raw, but who's one you could pick that maybe could be a superstar that nobody talks about in the pre-draft process? It would be Jalex Hunt, right? Small school down there in, in Texas, right? Playing against lesser competition, but built like a Greek god and has all these physical attributes that you go, ooh, wait, ooh, he does this well, ooh, he learns this, watch out. And now he's in a spot where, like we just talked about with some of the quarterbacks, Mike, where he doesn't need to be dependent on right away. He can learn from some people, and you might strike gold here. It's incredible. I mean, good draft, but, I mean, the, the first three picks are out of this world good. The first two picks are out of this world good. Quinion Mitchell at 22 is the steal of the draft, right? You heard anybody. I mean, you you, you listen to Micah Parsons, draft pr uh, pundits, whoever. Quinion Mitchell was a top 15 player on everybody's board. And there it went, just falling the right way, and he fell right into the lap of the Eagles, and they didn't even have to trade to get him. It's unbelievable. The best-built team in football just got better, and it's, it's unreal what they're doing. And then they get Cooper DeJean, another corner in round two, a guy who thought he was going to be in round one, expected to be in round one. And that leads to one of the mindsets that the Eagles were looking for because they collectively have a chip on their shoulders for how last year went. They had the great start. They had the horrible finish. And now they're determined to make it right. Howie Roseman said they were looking for mentality like that. Guys with a chip on their shoulder. Guys who are trying to rectify something. And if you weren't part of the team last year, you're not part of that same vibe. But if you come to the table with different reasons, but the same attitude, that fits well with the attitude the Eagles are going to have this year. Now, look, chip on your shoulder like, you know, how dare you point out that we stink? How dare? I mean, whatever it was, it felt like it was internal, not external, that conspired to cause them to fail last year, but that's what they're looking for, guys who are pissed off about whatever it is that happened last year and are ready to turn it around. That's the kind of guy they were looking for in the draft. Oh, I mean, it's perfect. I mean, Quinion Mitchell plays like that anyways, right? It's a Devin Witherspoon type of attitude. He's bringing it. He doesn't want to let you have an inch and anything. If you catch the ball, he wants to knock your head off, but he wants to intercept the ball and never let you touch it. You know, So that, that chip was there. Cooper DeGene, it's not going to be much different. First off, him lasting in the second round is going to make him a little chippier for sure, right? And he's just a football player. I mean, they got the best corner, and Cooper DeGene can't play corner. He's going to be a safety or a nickel. That's what he'll be. And they got the best corner and safety in the draft to go along with already the best defense and most talented team in football, let alone it's orchestrated like we talked about last week with contracts looking ahead to where it's just like there's no end in freaking sight for a suffering giant man like myself to look at the Eagles and go, it might fall off in a few years. There is no end in sight. And they continue to make all the right moves out of Philadelphia. How they, they sign A.J. Brown to a new contract on draft night, two-year anniversary of the Mike Vrabel neck twitch. Right. 
Three year extension, ninety six million, thirty two million per Brilliant. year of new money. Brilliant. My, and my understanding is, hey, once Devonte Smith got paid, AJ Brown came knocking. So instead of telling him you're oh, well by the terms of your contract, you have a commitment for three more years. You will not. They're like, you know what? We got to do the right thing yeah. by AJ Brown. They He's awesome. Let's years, do it. We know we want him. Right? Year, and yeah. Off they go. Right. We know and, we and want him. Let's other, get him for the low now. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Jerry. Are you paying attention? Quasi, are you paying attention? It's never going to get cheaper. These other deals are just going to drive it up. Between Devontae Smith, Amon Ross St. Brown, and now A.J. Brown, the price keeps going up. But the Eagles, proactive. Two of the three guys who are driving up the price for everyone else, Eagles players, because they recognize, let's get this done. Uh, Jeremiah Trotter Jr., we met with him at the scouting combine, round five. Yeah. Son of Jeremiah Trotter, a member of the Eagles Hall of Fame. The first player who ever had the franchise tag rescinded from him. He was back with the Eagles for two stints after he left. And Howie said over the weekend that you got to be true to your board. I I still think that it's still human beings that make these boards. You, you know, there are different ways you get your place on the board. The fact that you've got the bloodlines, the legacy, the, the, the knowledge that, you know, if a message needs to present to Junior, we'll give Jeremiah a call and he'll make sure Junior gets pointed in the right direction. I mean, if all things are equal, having that connection, having a good story, having somebody who has been such a key piece of your franchise – I, you know, it's it's a it's a plus. It's an attraction. And they try to turn it into a mathematical formula. But some of these other things, I think, just make sense. Yeah, it, it's it's just like any business. You're you're happy. You're happy having people that, you know, you're connected with, you know, you know, the makeup of the person, you know, the makeup of the person that raised this this person. So we trust that we know what he was as a professional. So we trust in that. Right. I think there, there is a comfort level there. As, as far as that's concerned. And, and yeah, you know, I mean, were there, it's the type of thing where, hey, if there might have been five guys with exactly the same grade, right, all the things that you just brought up were the tiebreaker, where they're just like, wait, wait, we know him, you know, we know the dad, we know what he's about, right? We know he's not a troublemaker, he's not going to make any, like, so there's just so many things there that I think, uh, just like in any business, where it's like, hey, Knowing something brings com- comfort to the bosses, and uh, that that's probably why they did it. It's a cool story to see that he gets to go play for his, his dad's old team. Really cool. A lot of sons making it to the NFL oh, this yeah. weekend, either yeah. through the draft or Woo. through – yeah, you can relate to that yeah. – or through free agency. <laughs> Frank Gore Jr. to the Bills – Tariq Owens, son of Terrell Owens, to the 49ers. Oh, Brandon I mean, Rice, I just can't believe it. Gary's son to All the, the I mean, they must just be calling the NFL and getting their son's jobs. How dare they? What do they do? <laughs> they must be like, I want my son to be on a team. That's I I mean, I have people like still like, you know, they, they still think that too. Like, oh, your dad got you the inside track. They're like, what? You're like, are you freaking kidding me? It's not how the NFL works. Sorry. But, you know, John Lynch said this last week. There is something to be said for bloodlines. Exactly. And he was talking about how he was watching Tariq Owens when they did the local pro day where all the guys with connection to the area are allowed to just kind of show up on the same day. And he said he saw Tariq Owens running, and it's like, that's that's Terrell. Yeah. That's him. Right. Same Same stride. So, you know, this and, and just being around it when you're a kid. There's that great picture of Frank Gore Jr., with his dad after a playoff game. And I think that was one of the reasons why Patrick Mahomes wasn't freaked out by professional sports. He was in Major League Baseball clubhouse. It's just it's an easier adaptation yeah, to what you are now doing. And uh, there's nothing about it that makes you wide-eyed and confused and scared. Right. It's all very natural, and you make the transition right away. Makai Becton. First round pick of the Jets in 2020. I remember that was the virtual draft, and they went to, like, they should have drafted his dad, too. His dad's every bit as large as Mekhi Becton. It didn't work out with the Jets. Eagles on a one-year deal worth up to, there's that phrase again that does plenty of work, up to $5.5 million, which I assume is premised in part on playing every game. Like, are they going to have the biggest freaking team in the history of football, or are they going to have the biggest freaking team in the history of football? I mean, it's incredible. And this is another brilliant move. 
It's just depth with an extremely talented guy who hasn't been able to stay healthy, and you bring him there with Malata and Lord, uh, Lane Johnson, and, you, hey, maybe he fixes a few of his issues, what he's doing playing-wise, but either way, right, if one of our guys go down, it's not like it's like, oh, no, we don't have a talented big guy there. I mean, it's incredible. It really is. It's just one after another. I mean, they're gigantic across the board. Jurgens taking over at center is 320 or 305, right? You got Landon Dickerson, who's 332, okay? You got, by all due accounts, Steen from Oak, uh, their draft pick last year from Alabama will be the other guard. He's over 320. And then you get to Mylotta, who is what? I just want to make sure I got it right here 365 with Lane Johnson dancing right under 330. Are you kidding me? Like, yeah, if you're in the NFC East, you better have some big boys playing defensive line because they're going to blow you the hell out of there in Philadelphia with that O-line. I was joking when they signed Becton, they could make him the center for the tush push because there's no way Hertz is going to miss that target. <laughs> you're right Becton. about that. I mean, it's that. I'm not even mentioning their defensive tackles. We're also the biggest damn human beings you'll ever see in life. I mean, it's just amazing. They got a combination of speed and size on this football team right now that – I, I really think it's one of the more well-orchestrated teams I can remember in recent history. It, it really is. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.